Mistful Crimson Morning. You know it, the mod featuring many spooky scary variants of our favorite Spongebob characters. But what do we really know about it? Here's 10 things about Mistful Crimson Morning. Alright, before we get into it, I gotta let you know we're gonna be covering some spooky scary topics throughout this one, so I promise to keep it factual and lighthearted. See? Alright, let's get into it. Mistful Crimson Morning is based on the Crimson Mist, or Squidward's Sewer Slide Creepypasta. Though Crimson Morning isn't the first mod about this story, it's certainly the most popular, at least in my comment section. The story is that an intern at Nick Studios was working alongside the editorial staff on new episodes of Spongebob, when a tape labeled Squidward's Suicide lands on the team's desk. The episode starts as normal, Squidward is practicing his clarinet poorly for an upcoming performance while being irritated by his spongy yellow neighbor. The scene then transitions to a concert hall where Squidward is playing to a crowd, but at this point frames of the video begin to skip and distort. Squidward then finishes his song and looks at the audience for their reaction. Almost immediately, the crowd begins booing and accosting Squidward, including Spongebob, to which Squidward is noticeably upset. The scene then transitions to a crying Squidward in his room, who after a few minutes of violent sobbing reveals bloodshot eyes with some kind of black ichor seeping from them, presumably ink. Squidward then very suddenly, you know, does the deed with a shotgun and the episode ends. The narrator of the story then claims that nothing came of the investigation of the tape, and that it seemed to be some sort of in-company sabotage or sick joke. There's a few things that happen in the story not appropriate for a funk and fact video, but you get the gist. Squidward's Sewer Slide is arguably the most well-known creepypasta, having coined the now infamous description of hyper-realistic eyes. The mod follows the plot of the creepypasta, showing a rapidly changing Squidward becoming more and more deranged with every song, and eventually using his iconic shotgun to fire upon his opponent, and then as a complete shock to me, turn it on himself. <laughs> what? What? The first song in free play, Sanguil 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 Crimea, is based on a scene from an actual Season 12 Spongebob episode, Spongebob in Random Land. The episode follows Spongebob and Squidward attempting to deliver a Krabby Patty to a citizen of Random Land, which Squidward initially told them was outside of their delivery range, but oh yeah, Mr. Krabs wouldn't let a purchase slide, even if it's at the risk of his employees. Krabs insists Squidward accompany his spongy co-worker on this journey, and the duo is, somewhat reluctantly, on their way. They're then thrust into a land where the laws of reality are skewed and unruly making for quite the exciting adventure. They eventually end up trapped by a seemingly endless sea of doors, which at this point in the original cut, Squidward opens a door revealing the interior of his home, which is then followed by a sudden appearance of Red Mist Squidward. The track that plays upon his appearance is called Red Mist Q, directly referencing the creepypasta. In the UK and international release of this episode, the clip is replaced with Baby Squidward, only the original audio still remains. The name of the song, Singula... Si Sanguila Crimea is a combination of the Latin word bloody and tears. The song Tortured is a reference to the still in the simulation webcomic called The Bikini Bottom Horror. The Bikini Bottom Horror is a pencil drawn styled alternate universe comic about the rise of an Eldritch Patrick star, a vengeful character willing to punish all those who gain from his pain. In this universe, Patrick was dismembered by Mr. Krabs, who used the starfish's natural regrowth ability as an infinite source of meat for his signature Krabby Patties. The extent of Patrick's abilities become apparent throughout the webcomic, being part of a high mind and even seen transforming into a giant anatomically correct sea star as seen in Tortured. Squidward's appearance is due to going even further beyond the capabilities of a regular squid, and pretty much achieving his equivalent of Super Saiyan, a form he takes with him in his fight against Patrick. The story has quite a few twists and turns that I don't want to spoil, so if you got time, all 21 chapters and the four-part epilogue are available through stillinthesimulation.com, so check it out. Served Plankton is based on the Plankton Got Served creepypasta, which details a lost alternate ending to the episode one course meal, in which Plankton is revealed to be terrified of whales, to which Mr. Krabs dresses up as his daughter Pearl in order to scare him. Plankton then decides to lay down on the road and wait for a bus to come and run him over, to which Spongebob reveals that it was in fact Krabs terrorizing him the entire time, and Plankton enacts a fitting revenge. In the creepypasta, however, Plankton doesn't believe Spongebob's numerous attempts to convince him off the road, and the bus does eventually come speeding down the street and hit him. He's then suddenly standing atop a pedestal, seeing a light above and a dark abyss below populated by the numerous whales he's afraid of, implying Plankton is in purgatory before ending up in either heaven or hell. Plankton then hears his numerous family members calling out from below, seemingly also dead considering whales eat Plankton, and he eventually jumps into the abyss and accepts his fate. Plankton's appearance comes from deviant artist Moopintoot and their post Plankton, depicting the character with two eyes, hidden teeth, and one red eye in the style of the show's detailed stills. The scream heard and served comes from the ending of the episode Plankton's Army, where Plankton is tricked into thinking the Krabby Patty secret formula includes a surplus of plankton. Meat Canyon SpongeBob comes from the video Secret Formula, 
uh, a disturbing take on the dynamic between SpongeBob and the people he serves at the Krusty Krab. In this cartoon, SpongeBob literally puts himself into his work by adding chunks of his actual body into the patties as the secret formula, an ingredient so sought after that both Squidward and Mr. Krabs begin consuming the ingredient right off his body. In true Meat Canyon fashion, SpongeBob is disturbingly unfazed by this and even seems to enjoy satisfying them at the sacrifice of himself, even stating, I don't think I could stop, even if I wanted to. Why would you want to stop when people love what you do this much? Meat Canyon mentioned in a podcast that the video came about due to their own reflection of burnout and expectation. Meat Canyon parallels himself with Spongebob in this video and that he feels like he's giving parts of himself away in order to meet the expectations of the many, in this case his viewers, and that people are only satiated for a short while before coming back and demanding more. Even though it's a massively successful show, Meat Canyon felt that Monster Lab wasn't as well received as his other videos, which reinforced this idea that people only really want one thing from him. Personally, I think he's really broken this philosophy with the videos he produced is on his second channel, Papa Me, where he really gets to just mess around and make the type of content that makes him happy. The song Dead Hope is also based on a lost episode creepypasta, in this case the story of Squidward being alerted to something terrible happening to Spongebob and Patrick, only when investigating they're nowhere to be seen. The duo then appear behind Squidward and startle him, causing him to run to the Krusty Krab, only to discover that not only Mr. Krabs, but every customer is also faceless. Squidward, in sheer terror, attempts to escape Bikini Bottom, but passes out from stress in jellyfish fields. Squidward wakes up on an operating table with a dark figure looming over him and several operating tools around the table before the screen cuts to black with the sound of visceral screaming and splatting. The episode ends with Squidward in jellyfish fields attempting to scream, only he too has become faceless. Dead Hope takes a few liberties with the story, like having Spongebob and Patrick float and chase boyfriend, while in the original story they neither chase nor float, implying the Dead Hope version of the characters are the ones removing the faces. This song also crashes the program when losing, making it technically the only custom death animation in Mistful Crimson Morning. The song Dumped is based on the bootleg Spongebob legend, in which a single frame of a heavily distorted found VHS of a Spongebob episode is said to wreak havoc on the mentality of those who witness it. It is said that if one were to stare at the image long enough that they would see Spongebob blink. Missful Crimson Morning expands on this idea by having bootlegs seemingly come out of the TV, having their mouth not just missing but covered in spongy skin, and having the character get annoyed partway through the song. The songs Cannibalism and Plagiarize are both based on actual aired television shows. Cannibalism is based on the robot chicken skit Krabby Patties, in which Spongebob reveals to the customers of the Krusty Krab that Krabby Patties are indeed made of crab. The 3D appearance of the stage in the song is used to reflect the stop motion animation style of the show it originates from. The song Plagiarize, yes it's misspelled, no I don't think it's on purpose, originated from the show Coconut Fred's Fruit Salad Island. The show stars Coconut Fred, the obnoxiously positive anthropomorphic coconut, and his misadventures with the other denizens of Fruit Salad Island. Coconut Fred was viewed as a blatant Spongebob ripoff, so much that the actual voice actor for him, Rob Paulson, stated multiple times they hated voicing the character. These are characters originating from shows, but what about one originating from a game? Dehydrated Spongebob is actually taken directly from the original 2003 release of Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom. During the Sandy Tree Dome segment of the game, the player must defeat all the robots in the area before the time runs out. This is why the stage takes place in front of a giant tree. Dehydrated Sponge has the second largest sprite sheet, and RC Spongebob has the largest, likely because these characters are rendered in 3D and require more frames. Joe Mama is pretty much this mod Sunky. Joe lives in a universe of memes and presumably gained sentience from the puddle of ink he's standing in. Most of his directional poses reference well-known Spongebob frames, and the losing icon is the no bitches meme. His opponent appears to be a minus rendition of Boyfriend, meaning his design is based on the original icon, similar to how Joe was designed after an original icon for Squidward. The background of the stage is a collage of varying Spongebob stills, memes, and edits, all reflecting the universe Joe was created in. Just when you thought the mod was already jam-packed, the dev team has decided to continue production on future updates for Miss Full Crimson Morning. The team has been pretty transparent about future content, most of which is being teased on MCM's official Twitter. We have confirmation on Lies Fish, Goading Among Lee Squidward, and new versions of currently existing songs like Satisfaction. This includes a bikini bottom take on the star of Creepypasta, which those of you who watched the Extra Thing Sonic EXE video would know all about. Squidward will be taking the part of Dr. Robotnik, and Mr. Krabs will be filling Tails' role in the story. Not only is the song a reference to Sonic EXE's fight or flight, but it is literally composed by the same musician, Churgny Gurgny. And that's 10 things about Mistful Crimson Morning I hope you enjoyed. Another creepypasta mod in the docket. I look forward to revisiting this mod in a future update. How about next time we cover a less disturbing topic though, eh? Alright, thanks for watching. Until next time.